Welcome to HealthCast, the heartbeat of health IT. I'm your host, Melissa Harris. The National Cancer Act was signed 50 years ago this year. The act gave increased funding and authority to the National Cancer Institute to take on what was then called the War on Cancer, an effort to find the cure for cancer. In honor of the 50th anniversary of the National Cancer Act, HealthCast is working in partnership with NCI to bring you a mini-series of episodes highlighting the work of the Institute leading up to the National Cancer Act and since its passing. We'll be releasing these episodes bi-monthly throughout the year, ending in December with the official anniversary of the Act's passing. These episodes will touch upon advancements in mission, research, bridges in health disparities, clinical trials, and more at the NCI over the years with the National Cancer Act as the centerpiece focus. Our first episode, which will release next week and will star NCI Director Dr. Ned Sharpless, will discuss the history of the National Cancer Act and NCI's mission and work since then and leading to today, including how the current administration is supporting NCI. To give a sneak peek to this series, Dr. Sharpless spoke about the importance of the National Cancer Act to NCI and to the medical community and public at large. The National Cancer Act is a a very important anniversary in the history of cancer research. So, you know, it was in 1971. uh, It was uh, part of a declared war on cancer led by President Nixon, and it had a lot of proponents. I I think that the idea that cancer could be a treatable thing, uh, you know, an entity where we could really make therapeutic progress, really took hold in the sort of 1950s when a group of doctors uh, began to show that you could actually cure children with certain uh, leukemias with multi-agent chemotherapy. And I think that before then, there were a lot of uh, stories of uh, responses to treatment and that there was some promising work, but it was that, you know, dramatic result of this uh, uniformly lethal childhood cancer being completely eradicated by uh, scientists at the NCI that led people to believe that maybe we could do this for a lot more kinds of cancers, that maybe pediatric leukemia wasn't unique in this regard. And and that, I think, galvanized the community, led by people like Sidney Farber and Mary Lasker and some sympathetic politicians to convince the president uh, that we needed a national uh, sort of organized effort against cancer. And that was the National Cancer Act of 1971. Although fighting the war against cancer and finding a cure has been a lot harder than advocates of the act initially thought, NCI has done a lot of work with the resources and support it has gotten from the legislation over the past half century. Dr. Sharpless will be the first to admit that there's still a lot of work to do, and he still sees how the National Cancer Act is making a difference in empowering NCI to do the work it needs to combat cancer. In 1971, when we started this, we didn't kind of didn't know what we were up against. The understanding of biology was pretty nascent in retrospect, and so It was thought that cancer was a a sort of simple problem. It was going to be, you know, comparable to what had happened with certain, you know, bacterial infections where it was as easy as developing an antibiotic that worked against that infection and then, you know, the disease could be eradicated. And so I I think there was this expectation that uh, cancer would be, you know, finished off in short order by this national effort. And that didn't happen. You know, cancer still is very much a problem in 2021, you know, leads to the deaths of 600,000 Americans a year in the United States, for example. But I think the National Cancer Act was very, very important because it did create this uh, sort of national system to take on cancer. And one of the things we realized pretty quickly, if you want to take on cancer, is you have to understand cancer at a scientific level. And so this national desire to make progress against cancer led really to the insightful biologic work that allowed us to understand the basic biology of cancer and that, in turn, has now allowed us to start making the uh, great progress we're seeing against cancer, particularly in the last decade or so. So it really was important because uh, we had a lot of initial work to do in terms of the biology to make progress against cancer, but the National Cancer Act started that. It did that in several ways. It supplied funding for that effort, so it increased the budget to the NCI. It gave the NCI uh, certain special authorities, like it directed the National Cancer Institute to create a national statistics of cancer. And this led to a, a really important uh, you know, database called SEER that we use for uh, cancer statistics. That's still uh, you know, the most important database of cancer statistics in the world now. It led to the creation of the Cancer Centers Program, which are the uh, 71 NCI-designated cancer centers now throughout the country. 
that provide cutting edge care to their patients, but also do basic research in uh, cancer. It uh, created Frederick National Lab, which is a biomedical research facility where we uh, do a lot of important cancer research, but it's also been a very important part of, say, our pandemic response for COVID. It did many, many other things. So it, it created a whole group of authorities and capabilities that provided the infrastructure that allowed uh, you know, the cancer research enterprise to be successful. The National Cancer Act's funding to and authorities of NCI have also benefited the biomedical research field as a whole, not just in cancer research, which really shows how this act and NCI's work are helping uplift medical advancements as a whole. To make progress in any area of medicine, a basic biologic understanding of the uh, you know, phenomena at work is critical. And sometimes you don't really know where that's going to come from. So, you know, scientists will start out working in what they think is, you know, one area, but very quickly, particularly basic scientists will realize that their work may be relevant to a whole different field. And, and there's been a lot of that in cancer research. So, you know, work we started out doing to try and understand issues of cellular signaling, you know, because of cancer has altered cellular signaling, that work has been very, very important across many, many areas of medicine, leading to an understanding of many non-malignant diseases as well as, you know, normal human development. So I, I think cancer research has this um, benefit for the rest of biomedical research that, you know, when we understand these molecular systems, they can be useful to, uh, you know, to other medical problems. It also works in the opposite direction. So cancer research has really benefited from medical research done in other areas. So, you know, for example, the epidemic of HIV, the AIDS epidemic, we learned a lot about immunology and about the infectious disease and, and the, the immune system. But a lot of the things we learned from the AIDS epidemic have been very, very valuable to cancer research. So biomedical knowledge sort of raises all ships. You know, it, it, it helps with cancer research, but it also helps with other areas of medicine unrelated to cancer. Dr. Sharpless will have more to tell on all the great work that NCI is doing in our first episode, which we'll release next week. We'll discuss more about the history of the National Cancer Act, its key players, and what NCI has done with its authorities and funding since 1971. Stay tuned for the rest of the miniseries, too, throughout the year. We'll have several guests from across NCI looking deeply into various areas across the Institute to chat about the great work they're doing. HealthCast is a production of Government CIO Media and Research. For more podcasts, head to governmentciomedia.com slash podcasts. If you liked what you heard, let us know by leaving a review in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. HealthCast is produced by Amy Kluber, hosted by Melissa Harris, Adam Patterson, and Faith Ryan. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, contact us at sponsor at governmentcio.com.